everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Today, I'm joined by Lindsay Levanchu, the co-writer and star of Initiation, which is releasing digitally and on demand on May 7th, 2021. We're going to talk to her in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer, and while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. What's up? What's going on? Hey. How's it going? Good. Look at this lighting. I love it. Thank you. Thanks so much for I wish I me. had that. Mine's uh, so bleak. Well, for, for a very low price on Amazon, you can get a cheap import that will light your back. It's a, it's a, it's a great investment. <laughs> I feel like I should get a disco ball. Yes. You know, just make it a party. You should. So I was wondering how, like, fratty i go with this interview because i was like okay this is this is like a frat film i was like oh wait no this is kind of eh, kind of comments it's, on that it's um, more than that it's so much yes. more than that yeah like yeah. i said i've i've had great experiences at frat parties and for the first two years i was sober at all of them oh, so i mean smart i mean very smart uh, and also <laughs> well, sad, I went for right? the dancing yeah it's smart and sad, <laughs> so that's, sad. well it's my sad friend that you you would have to do that because I mean I, I completely understand why you would want to you know keep your you know wits about you because it's a it's just a, a scary situation or can be you know it can be nice it can be scary you just don't know what's going to happen and so you know I think yeah touches on that as well it definitely does yeah yeah, yeah. um and so I should first comment I I, I was not going to wear the sunglasses and then I saw your bio and where you went to school I don't know if you can see that on the side I don't know if it's it an O O you see the logo? Oh, I can't see. Just an O. That's okay. all I can see. Let me see. What, I is can... It, what does it show? Oh, is it a Trojan? It is a Trojan. Ah, well, you know, so many people on our film went to USC. And USC let us shoot on their campus, and so do UCLA. We, we love both of them. We are so grateful for both okay. of them. Thank you for clearing that up, because I saw what used to be the <laughs> Fiji house, and I was like, that's the Fiji house. And I was like, wait, but the rest of this doesn't look like USC. And then, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, we did, uh, we did both. And so that was so fun for um, all of us. Th there were so many of us that were Bruins and or Trojans. Okay. And so it was a dream come true to be able to shoot with both. It was amazing. <laughs> Bridging those gaps. <laughs> yes, one indie film at a time. There you go. Um, <laughs> So this, so you you have you know an acting career. This was your first kind of oh I can see major writing role. So I guess how did mm -hmm. is this something that was your idea? Did you get you know brought in uh, to to a project that was already written? I guess how how did the initiation initiate itself? Oh, great question! <laughs> initiation initiate itself. I am so well. So originally I was a part of the short as an actor, and after the shorts success and how people were responding to it, John really wanted to make it into a feature. And then him and Brian were working on drafts together for years. And then um, there were other writers involved. And I would always be asked to come to the, um, the table reads of these drafts. And then, you know, John loves feedback. He, he's not like this artist that lives on an island somewhere. He loves to collaborate. So he always would ask me for feedback and ask other people for feedback. And eventually as the, the story was evolving, he asked me to come on board as a writer and it was an incredible experience. You know, I do a lot of writing in my preparation as an actor. Mm -hmm. And so getting to use that skill and um, that that way of developing the characters and the, and the whole world at, you know, from the origin of the script, you know, was amazing. And I think was such an opportunity. And I'm so grateful that John and Brian just welcomed me onto it because I think I, I really love actors too. And it was just <laughs> such a cool idea to go, I really want to be a part of giving these actors something that they'll really enjoy working on. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that's how it all kind of came together and started. Well, excellent. I think it's a really smart choice, especially with a film like this, where you have, you know, 
uh, fraternity and sorority interactions and, and women at a party and the kind of the situation that can arise. And I think it's, and, and also the aftermath, right? How you feel, whether you want to report it. Yeah. You know, I think that's an important aspect of this film. And it's also very important that you have experiences in college. You probably, I don't, you know, I don't know what happened in college, but you either, you know, felt unease or had experience or had friends with experiences. So it must be mm -hmm. something a little more personal that you could bring to this story and kind of flesh out the overall, you know, build up to the then horror setting of it, so. Definitely, yeah. It, we, we definitely, in my opinion, the best horror is drawn from reality. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the horrors of today, you know, these like terrifying, um, issues and and terrifying acts that happen to people every single day like that's the true horror mm -hmm. and to get to utilize such an incredible genre as horror to tell that story you know and it's a genre that John knows extremely well and loves it was just um so cool to bring it all together yeah to be definitely. a part of that and I, you know, I think may, maybe it's because I'm also just getting more into horror but I see a lot of films that kind of do this where you use horror to then tell about real life horrors or kind of educate about things that can happen and you get this kind of you know you come in for this entertaining film and then maybe you you know it makes you think about something a little differently or you learn a little yeah. bit or you just see a different yeah. perspective which is you know it's always good to have a dual purpose for entertainment definitely so you know it sounds like there was a short that uh, that you were mm -hmm. involved in so that you know i guess that, that was the inspiration for the the full-length film do you, was that a project? Yeah, part okay. of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, part of it. It was um, it was birthed out of, well, John was at USC at the time um, right in film school. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, John and I met at UCLA in theater, and then yeah, he no, went on to perfect. film school at USC. It's, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> but so he was taking an incredible class that they had um, called Media for Social Change. And so he was like, oh, you know, what do I write about it? And back then, you know, did we film it? It was 2012 or 2013. I think it came out in 2013. These years just go by so fast. Hey, except um, for this last year. Every year before except that. Except <laughs> for this last year, which just creeped along. Yeah. Um, but he was like, you know, back then, hardly anyone had a privatized Facebook. And you would just accept whoever as your friend. And you would just post whatever you wanted. And you weren't thinking about that one, this is a, a massive web space that will track everything from now on, but that also everyone knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so his point was, you know, it all starts when the lead character, who's also in our film, Maxwell Hamilton, the lead character types, parents gone, home alone, this is great, you know, and then something really terrible and incredibly um, thrilling happens. And so from there, he was like, wow, I mean, a lot of people responded to this short. What else can we talk about? And it went through so many different drafts. You know, Brian worked on several drafts with him, you know, years ago too, and, and other writers, and it just continued to morph. And John really, John is the through line through this whole thing and just really wanted, because he loves the horror genre, really wanted to talk about you know, the climate of the era. So that's how it kind of, so it's the social aspect and, you know, using online, you know, we all use our phones, everyone was using Facebook, you know, those ideas carried over into the feature. And I really liked that aspect too, the, uh, you know, I guess kind of overlay or how you want to call it, where you get to see what's happening on the social, on the social media side in real time as the actors are experiencing. I thought that was a, a cool way. To, I, yeah. I think I've seen it in a few other films, but it was really, really well done here. You kind of had all cool. the apps, all the messages, and, you know, it was, a, it was a nice way to kind of get to know what was going on without having to then force yourself to look at a screen. Right. Yeah. And it's, um, it's another way to, you know, like a lot, a lot of our texts are written into the script. Mm -hmm. So every single text that is sent has to further the storyline too. And then how they developed it, um, what, you know, how they conceived and put it on the screen, I think is so cool. Yeah. No, it looked, it looked like something out of a video game, which, you know, it's, yeah. it's a great storytelling mechanism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
So you, you know, co-wrote and then starred in this film. So I guess, how did you balance? And it sounds like, you know, you had, you had a lot of writing in the preparation phase of it. And then, you know, when you were in the film, did you kind of cut that out? Did you try to stick to your script? Like, how did you balance, you know, the, the aspects of you had helped make this with the realities of now we're filming and, you know, maybe things have to change or, or changes have to happen? You know, we were all, um, us three as writers were very open to, you know, we're hiring these actors and we, you know, we want them to take on these characters, but every single person is different. So you're going to bring different qualities to the role. And that includes, you know, like, mm, this line isn't sitting right in my mouth and it doesn't <laughs> feel authentic when I'm saying it and so we'd be like well how do you want to say it and they'd be like great and well great let's do a take like that so we were open to to that authenticity really that's you know the final piece of the puzzle of the actors coming in um and then in terms of my preparation like i said yeah as an actor i i tend to do a lot of writing and so a lot of that prep happened in the writing process and um because it was my first time balancing those you know, I really just had to go click, click, delete on all of the other characters' <laughs> lines and through lines and goals and how they fed the themes and just focus on this chick, Elry. <laughs> um, and I think it also, I could do that because the filmmakers that I was working with were pros and so supportive and I could walk on set you know being like I don't know am I prepared and John's like shut up yes you are of course you are and he creates an incredible environment for everyone to work and our DP and everyone behind the camera and from you know honestly everyone and the actors, everyone, it was such a pleasure to work with everyone because the number one thing was we just wanted to do good work, but we also wanted everyone else to do good work too. So it was easy to take risks and to just like throw yourself in. You're like, excuse me, I remember writing that line and uh, you're, supposed <laughs> yeah. to act, you're supposed to have an emphasis on the Cut, end. <laughs> cut, no, that's not the line. Okay, let's go again. Yeah. <laughs> no. we, we have the budget, we can do it. <laughs> yeah, the budget. Indie films. Yes, <laughs> just flowing in money. Um, yeah. So I know, I know we have a limited time, so I want to move. I call it the lightning round. It's very, just very lightweight questions about the film uh, they, you awesome. know, to see how your experiences relate to the characters and things in the film. You can feel free not to answer. I will, you know, I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Okay. So the first question is, were you in a sorority or a fraternity? No, I was not. Okay. Have you ever been to a fraternity party? Heck yes, I have. <laughs> uh, what's the uh, the biggest or best party you've been to, or if you you don't want to you don't want to single out a specific. It was at USC. Party. It Ooh. was at USC. However, yeah. I will say that the I went to school with some DJs and like hardcore music lovers, and they were also friends with kids at USC, and so I got the best of both worlds because I would only go to fraternity parties if I knew these specific DJs would be spinning and they've gone oh. on to have incredible careers. So, and are still, you know, still killing it. Um, so I, you could find me on the dance floor. So if those DJs were doing their thing at who, wherever I would follow them so that I could dance. That sounds like an awesome plan. What, what, what was the best party if you don't mind me asking her? The best party? Yeah. Definite. I, I think it was at USC. It, it reminded me of like, oh my gosh, these are like, this is what I saw in the movies. Um, I, but I, you know, specifically can't quite remember, but I know that the themes were always really creative. Okay. <laughs> like there was one my freshman year of college at UCLA where um, they had all of their pledges um, haul in sand from the Santa Monica beach and fill their entire bottom floor of the fraternity with sand. And it was like a tropical tiki themed that Sounds party. like ZV Tahiti. Oh, was it ZVT? It was probably ZVT. It might have been Which is a fantastic fraternity. I mean, fraternity. I don't want to offend. I'm like trying to remember which one. <laughs> ZVT is awesome. Um, I'm trying to remember. Did you go to ZVT? I was Did you ZBT. do? Yep. Oh, awesome. I'm glad I was like, no, no, they were awesome. Um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what was, maybe it was, um, if you threw out more 
I might be able to say which one it was, but I, I didn't remember. go to that many parties outside of ZBT ones, but uh, oh yeah. yeah, because those were the best. Yeah, quite clearly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, excellent. I'm glad. So I'll, I'll send your check uh, after the interview. You know, now that now that you made that plug, oh. part. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, do you have a real life brother? I do. I love okay. him so much. Does he look like uh, your your on film brother? You know. Um, I think they're in different, they're different heights. He's got brown hair and Freud's got a little more of like the sandy blonde. Um, and my brother's a skateboarder. Well, he did uh -huh. run, he was division one track. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So he did compete at a high level as well. Did you go to, did y'all go to college together? Or? No, we didn't. He went to uh, university of Missouri and I went to UCLA. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Both good schools. Um, yeah. Have you ever well, he went a... to a university in Missouri, but I won't ah. name it. It okay, wasn't the go. University of Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Mysterious. Uh, yeah. Have you ever worked in a lab? I, well, um, with school, worked like I wasn't, I was not paid, but going through school, science was one of my favorite subjects. Perfect. Science and math. I loved those, um, obviously, in addition to theater and history. And I actually really enjoyed school. But so the only labs that I would have been in were in school. But we did in preparation for this film, we were able to go to a lab and discuss the process that you see in the film we went through. That's awesome. And I liked I liked yeah. that part of the character, too, how, you know, I feel like a lot of the characters had more depth than you would kind of expect in a normal kind of fraternity slasher party and i liked you know how she was cool. both a sorority girl and then also you know she had dreams and you know she was obviously yeah. smart and you know able to kind of you know think for herself and and, and do well in school so i like yeah aspects. definitely do you own any power tools i actually do <laughs> i <laughs> my dad is like tim the tool man taylor you know <laughs> so i was sent I have tools. There you go. <laughs> I even have a wrench with my last name engraved, or my full, yeah, Lindsay Levanchi engraved. Um, because at UCLA, part of our theater classes was we had to work um, in all aspects of the theater. So if we were, you know, working in lighting, we needed to be able to uh, 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 and shift and move lights. And um, so, but yeah, so I, I do have power tools. That's awesome. <laughs> what is the uh, the heaviest thing you've had to screw or, or bolt down or hang? Probably another body, I would say. Oh. Okay, well, that's, that's a very... <laughs> that's <laughs> and a very the interview's different... <laughs> done. <laughs> oh gosh, let me think. Um, you know, heaviest thing. Have you, oh, actually I made a, in one of my old apartments, I made, I didn't, I had a really tiny closet. So I wanted to put a wood um, bar that I had oh, nice. Home Depot cut. And then I bought chains, really heavy duty, beautiful, like brass chains. And then I had to um, get them basically into the ceiling to oh. hold the weight of all of my clothes. So that's probably, it wasn't, super heavy to begin with but by the time it was holding my clothes it really needed to stay up there it never fell down so i That's did it right fantastic work good job <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh have you ever gotten stuck in a building i lose my car a lot in parking oh. lots so that's a, that's a good answer. No, I haven't gotten stuck in a building. I definitely lost my parents as a child being like, where is mom? Um, but I think big um, open parking, big parking lots and you can't find your car and you're by yourself. It's it gets a little scary eventually yeah, if you're still looking. That's functionally stuck. And that sounds like the perfect setup for another horror movie. So. Oh my gosh, it does. Actually, um, there was a, a really good horror film that came out called Lucky. And one of the final scenes takes place. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, it's awesome. Um, have you seen it? It's, it's. I think it's my favorite horror movie this year so far. It was really, really That's good. amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm going to tell them. Um, that's so incredible. Uh if you haven't talked to them already, I'm going to tell them. But yeah, oh, that, that final scene in the parking lot is just mm -hmm. like awesome. It is. So you should definitely check out Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know y'all should check out Lucky too. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, they were a part of um, the South by Southwest crew that we oh, were very a part cool. of. Very cool. Very cool. 
are you active on social media? Yes, on Instagram. There you go. Um, I really like Twitter, but I hardly ever use it. Um, but I like the writing aspect of Twitter. Um, and I'm on Instagram and I deactivated my Facebook a number of times, but I can't even tell you the last time I was on it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Seems like a, a constant struggle <laughs> with Facebook. Uh, so how can people yeah. find you on social media? On Instagram um, and I guess you don't really use Twitter. That is my but... handle. Uh, I think you can just um, type in my name, but I think I'm like something probably really confusing. I'm like, oh, this is what I am. I am underscore L underscore N underscore W <laughs> underscore L underscore. <laughs> but you can find me just under my name. That, that's my full name, Lindsay Noel Wendell Levanchi. So I just there did my name. It's so. difficult. <laughs> yeah, uh, as long as you're, as long as I can find with your full name, that that works. And uh, yep. so the the film comes out May seventh, digitally and on demand. Um, you know, I imagine you're uh, you either have other projects that are acting or writing. So you know, what what's next for you? What have you been working on? And where can people see you after they see you in this film? So I've been working on um, my one of my writing partners, Susie Kemp, and I. We shot a short film right before lockdown. And that was amazing. It was called Trying. It's called Trying. And over this past year, we've written the feature. And then, um, so our next move for that would be like, hey, does anyone want to make this with us? Um, and then I've been traveling through the South, doing, um, talking with a lot of farmers and trying to blend agriculture and my love for sci-fi together. And so that's my next writing project, or that's yeah. my current writing project. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Uh, that, that sounds okay. like a great setup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, awesome. So th thank you so much for joining me. You can look for Lindsay in uh, Initiation, which comes out May 7th, 2021, and then keep keep tuned for these, these uh, exciting future projects. So thank you so much for your time. Woo, hey, thank you so much for supporting our film. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Okay. Ciao. That was Lindsay Lavanchi, the co-writer and star of Initiation. Initiation is releasing digitally and on demand on May 7th, 2021. So you can check it out then and let me know what you think. It starts off with a party and ends with some murder. So what, what's not to like? If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot and make sure all my new interviews go straight to you. And as always, please go to watcherpass.com for all your movie reviews, interviews, and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.